Well, hey everybody out there, welcome back to the channel. It's Chris here from JMNC Games, and today it's time to pack our bags and head off to summer camp. It's for two to four players, ages uh, 10 and up, and the average game time is just about 30 to 45 minutes. If you haven't already done so, take a moment to like and subscribe to our channel. We greatly do appreciate that. It sure does help us grow. And if you feel so inclined, if the videos helped you in any way, uh, you can support us directly by visiting the application Buy Me A Coffee. If you buy me a coffee, hey, I'll mention you in the next video that I make. How about that? Hmm? All right, let's dive into it and take a look at what's inside the box. There is the lake board, seven activity packs, which have 28 cards per deck, and there are merit badges for each of those decks. There is the base pack, which includes 64 base cards and six merit badges, nine path boards, 24 snack tokens, the starting camper patch, four player boards, and 12 player pawns. To set up, place the lake board in the center of the play area, along with nine path boards. The path boards can be set up in any order, but need to be done in three rows of three, like this. Take the Camp All-Star Badges and place them in a stack going from highest to lowest. Place that stack here. Do the same with the Participation Badges and place that stack here. You need to choose three camp activities to play for this game. Once chosen, take those packs and matching badges out of the box and the rest are not needed for the game. Take the first activity pack out of the box. Find the Move One Space cards in each deck and remove them. Now shuffle the deck. Draw the top two cards and place face up like this. Take the rest and place them face down like this. Do the same for the other two activities, placing them here and here. Now take the corresponding merit badges for each activity and based on the number of players will determine on how many you use. Place the required number of badges for each activity at the end of the path where the cards match on the other side. From the base deck, remove all of the lights out cards. Then separate the rest into three piles, the s'more pile, scavenger hunt, and free time. Take those three piles and place them here to the right of the playing area. Each player receives seven Lights Out cards. They also receive one of each of the Move One Space cards from the activity decks. Players take all of these cards and shuffle them together. Place them face down here on their player board. Any remaining Lights Out cards or Move One Space cards are returned to the box. Players collect their pawns. In a two-player game, place one pawn at the start of each path like this. In a three-player game, place one pawn on each path here. And in a four-player game, the pawns are placed here. Each player takes one snack token, places it on their board. The rest are placed in a pile near the board. Determine who will be the starting player and give them the starting player marker. Play will go clockwise from there. The starting player will draw three cards from their pile into their hand. The player to their left will draw four cards. If there are three players, the next person draws five cards, and if there are four players, the last person draws six cards. These are just the starting draw hands. For each additional turn during the game, all players will draw five cards at the start of their next turn. Before we get into the gameplay, let's look at the cards in the game and how they work. Here is the name of the card, a nice picture of them. If the card has an action associated with it, it will be listed here. Here is the purchase value of the card, or how much does it cost to buy. Cost is referred to as energy. 
Energy is acquired from snack tokens, s'mores, and lights out cards. Plus, any card can be used as one energy instead of using it for its actual purpose. Here is the value of the card in victory points if it is in your possession at the end of the game. And this is what deck the card belongs to. Merit badges have their name here and the value of the badge in terms of victory points if it's in your possession at the end of the game. On a player's turn, they can play all of their cards in their hand in any order that they choose. When a card is played, it goes from their hand to the discard pile here. Once you have played all of your cards, your turn is over and the next player goes, and so on. If you play a card that has an action of move and a number of spaces, you can move your pawn that many spaces along the track as what the card indicates. So for example, if you played the kitchen chores, you would move your pawn one space along the cooking path. If when you move your pawn, you land on or travel through one of these spaces, you gain that space's bonus. This space allows you to draw one new card from your draw pile and add it to your hand to be used during the current turn. This space gives you one snack token. However, keep in mind that you may only have a maximum of six snack tokens. This space will allow you to move any one of your pawns on any path one space. If that pawn also lands on a bonus space, you may take that bonus as well. You can choose to buy new cards to add to your supply. The available cards to purchase are here face up, and the prices indicated here. If you wish to buy, turn in the necessary cards from your hand to the discard pile. You can also use snack tokens in combination if you wish. Any snack tokens spent go back into the supply. Lights out cards are worth one. S'mores are worth two. Snack tokens are worth one. Plus you can use any other card, like say for instance, the scavenger hunt card. Instead of using it for its indicated purpose, you can use it as one energy. Once you have turned in enough energy for the card you want, Take that card and then place it into your discard pile. Any cards that are not movement or not involved in making a purchase have an action listed on them. Simply follow the instructions of that card when playing. Once played and the action is taken, place the card into your discard pile. Once a player has played all available hand cards to the discard pile, this ends their turn. You should resupply any bought cards with new ones from the appropriate deck. The player should draw five new cards from their draw pile into their hand for next turn. If there are not enough cards in the draw pile, shuffle the discard pile and add that to the bottom of the draw pile. Finally, a player should check if they have earned any merit badges. For the participation badge, Players must have all of their pawns either past or on the first bridge. For an all-star badge, a player must have all of their pawns either past or on the second bridge. When a player's pawn reaches the final bridge on a particular path, they would collect the merit badge of that path. All badges earned are stored on your player board. Once a player has collected three badges from each path, this indicates the end of the game. Players continue to take turns until it reaches the player to the right of the starting player, so that all players have had an equal amount of turns. Once that is complete, the game is over and it's time to count the score. First, tally up all of the points received from merit badges. Add that to any cards in your deck that have victory point values. And finally, any player who still has pawns on the board that did not finish a path 
If the remaining pawns are in this area, they collect the number of victory points shown on the space above. The camper with the highest score is the winner of the game. And that is how you play Summer Camp. Thanks for joining us today. We sure hope you enjoyed our explanation on Summer Camp. If you've got any questions, you can always drop them down in the comments below, and I'll try to answer those as quickly as I can. And remember, if you'd like to support the channel directly, you can always visit the application, buy me a coffee, and I'll give you a shout out on our next video that I produce. Well, now we know the basics, so let's play.